Queen Elizabeth II, who ruled the United Kingdom for seven decades, was such a long-standing institution that it's easy to forget she wasn't even supposed to have become Queen at all. Born in 1926, Elizabeth was the daughter of King George V's second son, and had little expectation of succeeding to the throne, until her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated in 1936 to marry the divorced American socialite Wallace Simpson. After the death of her father, King George VI, in 1952, the 25-year-old Elizabeth was called upon to assume the throne, beginning a momentous reign as one of Britain's best monarchs. We take a look now at the Queen's highs and lows during her 70 years on the throne. Queen Elizabeth II's coronation, June 2, 1953. Held at Westminster Abbey, Elizabeth's coronation ceremony was the first to be broadcast live on television. Some 27 million people in the United Kingdom, out of a population of 36 million, watched the ceremony, and 11 million more listened to it on the radio. Afterwards, some 3 million people lined the route as the Queen and her entourage made their slow procession back to Buckingham Palace. The Aberfan mining disaster in Wales, 1966. On October the 21st, 1966, an avalanche of mud, water and debris from a coal mine buried an elementary school in South Wales in the village of Aberfan, killing 116 children and 28 adults. Though Prince Philip arrived in Aberfan a day after the disaster, the Queen herself delayed her visit for over a week, fearing her presence would distract the rescue and recovery efforts. Some of those close to Elizabeth, including her former private secretary, have said that she regret the decision not to visit Aberfan sooner. Her Silver Jubilee, 1977. On June the 7th, Elizabeth and Philip rode in the Gold State Court from Buckingham Palace to St Paul's Cathedral to officially celebrate her 25th year on the throne. Wearing a bright pink outfit, including a decked out hat with 25 fabric bells, the Queen repeated her long ago pledge to devote her life to service, saying that, although that vow was made in my salad days when I was in green in judgment, I do not regret nor retract one word of it. Prince Charles' wedding to Lady Diana Spencer, 1981. On July the 29th, 1981, an estimated 750 million people across 74 countries around the world tuned in to watch Prince Charles, Elizabeth's eldest son, marry Lady Diana Spencer at St Paul's Cathedral. The romance between the heir to the British throne and the young, shy Diana had attracted massive media attention and their lavish nuptials were considered the wedding of the century. While Diana earned the adoration of the public, her marriage to Charles and her relationship with the royal family was troubled from the start. Annas Horribilis, 1992 Charles and Diana's marriage continued to deteriorate and in 1992 they announced their decision to separate. Prince Andrew, the Queen's second son, and his wife, Sarah Ferguson, also separated, while Anne divorced her husband, Mark Phillips. Later that year, a fire broke out in Windsor Castle, destroying more than 100 rooms. In a speech delivered to mark the 40th anniversary of her succession, Queen Elizabeth remarked that 1992 has turned out to be an Annus Horribilis, Latin for a horrible year. The death of Princess Diana, 1997. Public criticism of the royal family grew more intense after the finalisation of the divorce of Charles and Diana in 1996. After the death of Diana in a car crash in Paris the following summer, the Queen initially remained at her estate in Balmoral and refused to allow the flag to fly at half-mast over Buckingham Palace or address the grieving nation. At the urging of her advisers, she soon revised her stance on the flag, returned to London to greet crowds of mourners and delivered a rare television address to a nation distressed by the loss of the people's princess. Golden Jubilee 2002 The Queen's celebration of her 50th year on the throne was marred by a double loss when her younger sister, Princess Margaret, and their mother died within weeks of each other in February. As the first British monarch since Victoria to celebrate a Golden Jubilee, Elizabeth travelled more than 40,000 miles that year. Including visits to the Caribbean, Australia, New Zealand and Canada, she also visited 70 cities and towns in 50 counties in the United Kingdom. Compared to the tragedy of the 90s, the start of Elizabeth's second half century as Queen coincided with the beginning of more positive relations between Britain and the royal family. In 2005, a majority of the British public supported Charles' wedding to his longtime love, Camilla Parker Bowles. Prince Philip's death, 2020. On November the 14th, 1947, the couple were married in Westminster Abbey, and King George VI named Philip as Duke of Edinburgh shortly after that. 
For more than half a century, Prince Philip supported his wife on her royal duties and took on an ambitious workload of his own. Philip's funeral was held on April 17th, 2021. Because of coronavirus restrictions, only 30 guests were invited to attend. And the now famous photos of the Queen sitting alone in St George's Chapel struck many as a symbol of her loneliness and grief. The Queen's Platinum Jubilee 2022 In February of this year, England began a series of celebrations marking Queen Elizabeth II's 70th year on the throne. On June the 2nd, a military parade featuring 1,400 troops in bearskin caps, musicians and 240 horses, a Royal Air Force flyover and an 82-gun salute were staged to honour the 96-year-old monarch, whose birthday was on April the 21st. As we now know, Queen Elizabeth passed away peacefully at Balmoral on the afternoon of the 8th of September 2022. But what is the protocol following the Queen's death? During her time on the throne, the Queen has overseen 15 UK Prime Ministers, 20 Summer Olympics, half a dozen Popes and 12 US Presidents. The Queen is the cornerstone of the Commonwealth, a patron of over 600 charities and organisations, and plays a pivotal role in the UK's alliance with so many countries, so her passing is going to bring a lot of change around the world. Operation London Bridge is the code name for the event of the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. The first plans for London Bridge date back to the 1960s, before being refined in detail at the turn of the century. Since then there has been meetings two or three times a year for the various people involved, which include a dozen government departments, the police, army, broadcasters and the Royal Parks. Participants describe them as being deeply civil and methodical. Everyone around the world is looking at us to do this again perfectly, said one member, and we will. Plans are updated and all versions are destroyed. It includes planning such as how the funeral procession will take exactly 28 minutes at a slow march from the doors of St James's to the entrance of Westminster Hall, and how the coffin must have a false lid to hold the crown jewels, with the rim at least three inches high. On the day of her passing, there will be bulletins in place, as there was, but not many. The Queen is suffering from great physical prostration, accompanied by symptoms which cause much anxiety, announced Sir James Reid, Queen Victoria's physician, two days before her death in 1901. The King's life is now moving peacefully towards its close, was the final notice issued by George V's doctor, Dr Lawson, at 9.30pm on the night of 20th of January 1936. Not long afterwards, Dawson injected the King with 750 milligrams of morphine and a gram of cocaine, enough to kill him. For a time, the Queen will be gone without us knowing it. Her private secretary, Edward Young, will pass on the message to the acting Prime Minister, which was Liz Truss, at the time. That message will likely read, London Bridge is down. The Prime Minister will then set up London Bridge in action, within minutes. The 15 governments outside the UK, where the Queen is head of state, will be alerted. That will then be followed by the 36 Commonwealth leaders and nations then also being informed. The gates of Buckingham Palace will then present a black edge notice of the news, at the same time a news flash will alert media around the world. Every media network has preparation for this event called Orbit. Radio stations have a network of lights that flash to represent a national catastrophe such as this. All BBC shows will stop and run a feed dedicated to the news. News readers are dressed in black, that is always there on hand in the studio. Their traditional news branding turns black and news channels, radio stations and TV channels will then go into orbit with days of pre-prepared coverage ready to go. On the same day as her death, the Queen's eldest son Charles immediately becomes King. Since the Queen passed away in Scotland, Operation Unicorn is the... The funeral itself is estimated to take place 10 to 12 days following her death. The day of the funeral, unless held on a weekend, will be an official bank holiday. At 11am sharp, the bells of Big Ben will chime, and the country fall silent, as her coffin is carried to Westminster Abbey, where 2,000 guests will attend. After the service, the coffin will be taken to Windsor Castle, and then finally to St George's Chapel, where she'll be laid with her late husband Philip and her father King George VI. Within a year of the funeral, an official coronation will take place for King Charles III, which will be another public bank holiday. The passing of the Queen will cost the UK economy billions, with the bank holidays and closure of businesses. Lots of change will come over the following months as new currency will need to be printed and the old currency slowly become out of use. The same will happen for stamps, passports, 
police and military uniforms. The national anthem will also change to God Save the King. Her passing also holds much worry for the future of the Commonwealth and British monarchy, with many countries set to leave when the Queen is no longer reigning. This event will arguably be the biggest funeral of our lifetime and will be witnessed by millions around the world. Queen Elizabeth passed away peacefully at Balmoral on the afternoon of the 8th of September 2022. The end of an era.